It is indeed my pleasure to continue my conversation with the pastor of the Filippo Baptist Church, such a historic institution, and he's been pastor from 1995, Reverend that, the that Honorable Jeffrey McKenzie. Tell me about the Filippo Baptist Church and why it is such a historic institution. The Filippo Baptist Church was founded in 1818 by Christopher Kitchen, a British Baptist that came in the island. James Philippo came in 1823 and he helped to erect the Philippo Baptist Church. I've been privileged to pastor that church for the past 25 years. It has been a great challenge and a great opportunity for service and ministry. Why has it been such a challenge? Well, working with people and in an almost inner city community, you, ha you have different challenges that confront you. And I believe that I was able to make myself available to the community by making inroads in the whole matter of education, working with the students who have not done so well. And, and you can identify with that right, based on your own background. Right. Yes. And I would leave with them and with Jamaica the challenge that irrespective of your circumstance, you can make it if you only try. And Jimmy Cliff comes to mind. Indeed. You can make it, but you have to try. Try, 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 try indeed. Try again. Now, Filippo Baptist Church is in the heart of Spanish doll, yes? When I say the heart, you know what I mean. Yes. But there are two things there I want you to talk about, and that is there is a plaque speaking to the history of the church, and there's a tamarind tree. What's the significance of those two things? 1838 was the... Emancipation. Emancipation. And it is said by the historians that on the night of the 31st of July, Filippo had a service in the chapel and then marched down to the square where the proclamation was read. That's in Spanish town. In Spanish town. That the monster is dead, the Negro is free. And that jubilation filtered throughout the whole community. And the slaves, the ex-slaves, they took off the shackles. Shackles were... The chains. Chains were really off by then. But they stored them. And they dug a deep hole in the midst of the compound, church compound. At Filippo Baptist Church. Filippo Baptist Church and buried the shackles and uh, they planted a tamarind tree which symbolizes a bittersweet. The church lost the tamarind tree but they replanted. In one of the hurricanes I think it took it down? Yes, I am not but the fa fact is that, is there still a tamarind tree standing at Filippo uh, Baptist a Church? Big, a big one. And the plaque is right the there? The plaque is right there. Has anybody ever checked to see if those shackles are still there? You'd have to kill the tamarind tree. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't want to do that. If you're just joining me, I'm speaking with uh, Reverend Jeffrey McKenzie, the Honorable uh, Reverend Jeffrey McKenzie. The Honorable comes about because you're a Costas Rotolorum of St. Catherine. Yes. When were you chosen as Costas? June 11, 2015. What is your role as Costas of a parish? To represent the Governor General 
and to mobilize the 1,200 justices of the peace that are in the parish, motivate them to help to build their communities and to make sure that they carry out the dictates of the office. So to become a Costas, you would have to be a justice of the peace? Yes. Indeed. And uh, the duties you perform are varied. Varied. Such as? Many and varied. Uh, to bring greetings at churches and uh, institutions, schools, to encourage them and to motivate them. I carry out duties for the Governor General when he's unable to make it to a function. He would summon me, and I gladly represent him at these functions. And do you conduct or are you part of training for the Justices of the Peace? Yes, there are a number of training opportunities presented by the Minister of Justice, Ministry of Justice, to train the justices of the peace. I, I remember there were 1,200 in St. Catherine, but it's a large parish. You yes. mentioned something about schools, and perhaps it's a good time to speak of this. You've been chairman of several school boards going back many years. Yes. Would you like to list some of those schools for me? When I was in Trelawney, um, I was part of the Hastings Baptist Church and the Hastings community. They had a primary school there. I was the chairman for that. When I came to St. Catherine, there are a number of schools, the Kitson Town, um, Old Harbor Bay. Uh, Do you now chair any boards or schools at this point? I have literally given up some of them, <laughs> and I only chair the board of a basic school, the Mile Road Basic School. And that is important, because that's the beginning. Basic school. Indeed. We're going to take our final break, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with my special guest. This is Profile. Thank you for joining. <laughs> 